Greetings from Poets Choice. We are back with our next event, which is with Kim Malinowski. We welcome everyone who joins us today for this event. At the outset, I'd really like to thank Kim Malinowski. She has been the only poet who has seriously, seriously promoted this event that we are going to have over here for the last fortnight, which is unprecedented and I really, really thank her for that. She's really put in lots of effort for this event and I hope that it goes off very well. Now to highlight today's event, Kim Malinowski will be reading out her poems, but to begin with, I'd like to share that this is the book that she's published with us in, Jumbled Part 2. Now, in this book, she has a poem titled Update On, which kind of highlights uh, her in a way which is really interesting so she describes her life in it it's really interesting so i'd just like to share it with you uh, she says here that she bathes a trombone lovingly every wednesday thursday is coffee day and that is also a poetry day for her when the day she writes poems Friday our archaeology day interesting and then Saturday is parent day when she spends time with her parents uh, lunch is mandatory but the whole family is on a diet <laughs> that's um, then Sunday morning she spends with her grandma and Sunday evenings is at the church where she uh, does cleans the church which is again something to be praised about and then we come to Mondays when she is with her plan, uh, grandmother's plan she takes care of uh, the garden she waters uh, the apartment and then on Tuesday she which is today she uh, she dedicates the day to being something which I would refer it to be the victory day when she is actually achieving a great deal of success and things that she'd really like to achieve though she's worded it differently over here but that's how I look at it now today as such is also something special Today, according to the Indian scriptures, is Gita Jayanti. Gita Jayanti is the day when the holy scripture of Bhagavad Gita, the text, came into existence. So it is a really special day. And uh, also, incidentally, it is uh, an 11th day of the moon cycle, which is called the Ekadashi. The speciality about the Ekadashi, which comes every 11th, uh, every month, twice, is that it stores a good change. And I, it's, it cannot be a coincidence that I am meeting Kim for this event today. And today happens to be such a significant day. So, without much ado, let us have her on board with us. I'm going to go ahead and invite her right now. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm Kim Malinowski. Um, I am honored to be here on such a, a great day. Um, I had no idea it was such an important day. 
And I do admit that on Tuesdays, I uh, call it anxiety day. Uh, not necessarily a victory day, but perhaps uh, that's the new, ta- the new term, right? Exactly. It's the anxiety that leads us to victory. <laughs> that's exactly. how I think it. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, I guess um, I can just jump in. Is that all right? Oh, yes, it's absolutely okay. all right. Well, I- I'm reading from home. I'm going to read from Jumbled as well. That'll be next. Um, sure. I wanted to read my uh, title poem first. Um, okay. Just, you know, like you do. All right, it's, it's titled Home. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the pioneer house, the plains and farmland of North Dakota call me. The homestead still stands with broken windows, glimpse of the fullness it once possessed. Generations of habitants, births, deaths, collapse into ruins, into foundation, into history. I pick up a few glass bottles to remember the place maybe once filled with milk or tonic. A chipped teacup bringing up with her earth. I dust off my objects, now holding a fork. My grandfather was born here. Had he used this fork? My cousin, too far removed for me to understand, digs out a piece of Mama Jensen's lilac bush so that I can plant it, have a piece of it like the rest of the clan so I could belong to this place, the place my grandfather left to lug a carpenter's box. What are the precise coordinates of home? The piece of me collecting rubbish belongs here with the ghosts, where tall grasses swallow the house up, a standing grave. When will the shutters fall and the grass creep over? Will the wind still carry the scent of lilac and whisper my name? like a, a little interesting anecdote with that. My family in North Dakota, this is about, um, has been handing my book around and they actually found my great uh, grandmother's poems. They sent me one that is both uh, actual like full poem and also it's revision. So it was really cool for like, like a female ancestor uh, to be a poet because that is something that is not done in my family. Um, okay, I'm gonna just keep right on plowing. Uh, this is jumbled. Okay, um, and um, mine is update on Kim. I'm, I'm gonna read it in full, I think, um, because it, it, it was written a bit ago. It's sort of a past life almost. We're trying to remember it now. Uh, every Sunday, Kim cleans the church. She vacuums, dusts, spits on her finger to mop up spots on the floor. It's been 10 years since she's been not quite Christian. 20 since she started the job at 10. In the stillness, she tries to rewrite her moods, restructure her thoughts. Most days, these practices elude her. Mondays, Kim slowly kills her grandmother's plants. Her grandmother, maybe temporarily, maybe not, is in a nursing home. It's Kim's job to water at the apartment. She places three ice cubes on the orchid, briefly douses the African violet as per orders, she reports every morning and afternoon on their progress. Kim is always anxious on Tuesdays. Uh, no, no reason, and as such, buys another pack of colored pens because she can never find the orange when she needs it. Every week, even after the pens, she's still anxious. So she takes two lip glosses from the rack, slightly different shades, one with glitter, uh, to add to her collection. She hands the sales clerk a wad of ones lets them count it out. She ghostly shoves the bag in her purse, releases a deep breath, and suddenly lighter. Kim bathes her trombone lovingly every Wednesday, each stroke a ritual. With the trombone still dripping, she slides the mouth grooves in, canters and gurgles through forgotten notes, medicated memory, dead dreams. Soon she'll remember how to music. For now, and the scales chasing ghosts of the younger Kim. There's a communication of gratitude. This is when poems appear in a dizzy kaleidoscope. This is belonging, the rightness of neurons catapulting over each other, leapfrogging into socially accepted mood swing, or at least what Kim thinks is a productive one. Fridays are archaeology day. A fast-paced online class that fills up six hours of dreaming. 
Kim needs to know that she is just as smart now as she was in college, that she still has both potential and a future. She likes dirt and dust, remember sifting. Her favorite soil is sandy loam because it feels the way it sounds. Somehow, the podcast captures the taste of mud. Every Friday night, Kim opens an obscene amount of fortune cookies at the local Chinese food restaurant, searching in the Oracle for a destiny that she wants. After five cookies, she accepts that they are all true. She pastes the fortunes in her journal, gently smudging the glue off along the edges. Saturday is parent day. Lunch is mandatory, but the whole family's on a diet. Her father won't even eat carrots. Kim swirls a french fry lazily in ketchup, smacking her lips as she tastes it. Sunday mornings are her and grandma's. She brings McDonald's the morning paper. Kim sits in the wheelchair, hiding from age, speaking only of the flowers and the cards she brought in the morning news. Sunday nights are the church. How quickly dust settles, how faith disappears. Kim likes the church's emptiness. We can let her have her stillness. Let her hear faint echoes of hymns as she mops. Thank you for that one. It has been several years. My grandmother has passed by now, and she did wind up staying in the nursing home. So I'm sure that'll be a whole other book. <laughs> but, um, but yes, thank you. This is a very descriptive and lengthy uh, prose poem that I had the pleasure to come across, you know, I, and it's really organized. The way you've shed, uh, you've shed light on scheduling uh, is also rare in people's lives. The orderly fashion in which you've, you've expressed you led your life isn't uh, routine. It doesn't, some people do not come across this kind, kind of discipline daily in their lives. It's rare. And I compliment you for writing this and uh, having actually led this life. It's uh, commendable. Well, thank you. Yes, yes. Um, it was definitely a life of routine. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, but it was wonderful. And, and thank you so much for for having me in the you know in the anthology. I really truly appreciate it. Um, and thank you for having me here. Um, I think the next one I have is uh, The Poet. That's what I have it numbered as, so that's what I'm going for. Um, and uh, I guess as a, a, a little bit of a note so that people understand a little bit, um, I am bipolar and for um, five years I couldn't read or write. Um, I was never diagnosed with aphasia, though that is now what it's called. Um, so um, it goes into a little bit of that just for context. So The Poet. One. She wrote her first poem in a neon pink marble notebook, the seams unraveling in her heavy penned hand. She promised to aspire to Whitman and Zimborska. She whispered Rilke in her cleat. Always in her dreams, she was a violinist playing those two strings. Two. Energy pulsed up her spine like insects. At her fingertips, sparks. And then with a turn, the poet slowed. Even her pen felt too heavy and far away. She held tea parties with her illness. It took sugar and cream and willpower. She sipped sunshine, an herbal blend. Her legs folded on the floor beneath the table. The poet and her illness played Scrabble, a word roulette. The illness won with 24 point words. The poet was left to sevens. And then the words disappeared. The tiles scattered. The illness won everything. Three. The poet was left with phonics, the ashes at first. She could only write two sentences a day. Today, I read a word. Tomorrow, I will choose another. The poet began cheating at Scrabble. She sipped in the jerk and stole back her words, dusting off her towels. This time, she made the rules. And um, this leads into uh, the title, um, The Nam, which I know that I'm mispronouncing because I believe it is Latin, but it is a wonderful type of library that is absolutely amazing. Um, the one I went to um, was for members only, and you had to have somebody die to become a member, and there's a huge long list. 
and it was there since like New Hampshire had like people. So it was like this sense of ancientness of like of seeing like a 400 year old atlas. And you're like, um, so I uh, was privileged to be there um, right before I lost my words actually. So at the name for the injured dreamer who survived. These books are too passionate. They are decadent, lining the Anthenaeum. Nostrils breathe history here, the musk of ancient cobwebs. I am learning acquiescence, acceptance. They mock my austerity, my plainness. I am cavernous. This place echoes my illiteracy. It's been four years. Reading just stopped, like a sunset. The books are seductive, asking me to linger, to dally in the sun, lounge on finely carved chairs, to sprawl on the oiled wooden floor. Centuries could pass me by. These books are like poison, all 14,000 diabolical titles. Their dust jackets greedy for my fingertips. The books converse about, name the dead, hold court without me. They are wanton and brazen, and their binding spell, smell of time. My lips cracked with desire, thirsty for dusty volumes, grass cosmos, words orbiting. I cannot read them, not a syllable, not a trochee, not a dactyl, not anymore. And still they burn me, burn through me, I sound out each word, a forgotten skill, my tongue heavy and thick, I want to read with every pore, to inhale desperately and exhale understanding. I am so close, but the words, the books are treacherous. These books are old, covers trees, pages torn and bent. They repulse me, steal my sunlight, babble lies, rob my breath, and there is longing, a gasping, a flailing. I touched one, leather bound. Turn a lecher's page, caress an edge, it cuts me. I bleed. Such enchantment, and now the silence of sound, a pause, a punctuation. I come to daydream, to play pretend, touch the books, marvel at their betrayal, clutch them as if they were mine. A heartbeat, a beam of light, the letters glimmer. I can taste understanding, almost osmosis, I hold the spine, breathe in possibility, cry out as the book eviscerates me. Thank you. So I'm going to take a drink. Yes, yeah, sure. So we have a lot of people joining us and we welcome them and thank them for dedicating their time to us. And uh, I'd just like to bring uh, this point across. You shared that you write several poems about disability. Mm -hmm. So what inspires you to write about disability uh, in poems? Oh, uh, specifically, um, I, I really aim to have uh, pretty much a broad audience uh, both know about disability and also if they have some type of disability or, or even temporary illness, that they are not alone and that they can go get help. You know, like there's this huge concept, especially uh, like men, you know, like, every, I mean, really everybody, like this idea that you should not get help, it's shameful. Um, and I want to like dispel that myth, you know, get help, um, get your life back onto whatever track it needs to be. Um, I'm a very firm believer that you don't have to go the straight path like I used to think you had to do. You know, you swerve if you have to up the mountain, you still get up to the top. Um, so like, um, I actually have many, many people contact me um, and they ask me not really medical questions, but like questions like, well, did this happen to you? Or do you feel this way? Or what should I do? And it's actually quite nice to have a community and being able to like form like a coalition. Um, I, I feel like if we have a very open society about mental health issues, that um, there will be a lot less um, tragedy. Um, in terms of both like people dying and also people not living to their fullest. It's so. really interesting to see that you're focusing your poems on social work and uh, having a very clear purpose uh, behind uh, the poems that you write and the message that you send across. It's, it's one of the uh, prerequisites which I think every writer 
must have in order to get an audience to show interest in their work if the writer is not really focused then the audience also gets confused about what exactly is the writer wanting to do so i am really i think it is a gift to be focused and it's something which i really compliment in your work which uh, you just express so do you have any um poem on disability that you'd like to read out to us uh, today tonight oh uh, um, I, i'm sure i have another I, I, have, I, have, i have several um that are in here i just read the poet but there's actually like the the opposite where the poet gets healed which is sort of a, a similar sort of concept Uh so it's the poet's illness is healed and it's dedicated to Calypso who is a sea turtle um at the National uh, Aquarium here in Baltimore. Uh the poet watched the sea turtle at the aquarium. The one with three flippers loop lazily around waving to her as she wrote. Poetry is in the shell as she thought. Hard and notched, beautiful and awing. With each loop their languid eyes met. each recognizing a transformed warrior the poet went to an empty nook curious anxious the sea turtle did not disappoint following the two of them displayed themselves showing their armor and their wings the turtle waved her three flippers the poet lifted only her hand but in the glass's reflection her hand became a fourth flipper The turtles tranquility became the poets. Their illnesses were beaten back and then someone came and the two were left more whole than before. Wow. That indeed is really interesting. Now, um you also shared with us that your poems have a role to play in nature related to nature and spirituality so what would you like to say about that uh, please can you share something uh, yeah yeah uh, i'll actually um, and what I exactly will, do you mean i will share and then i will um explain because it's easier to to say than to or, or at least to read I can't find it in my poor little book but i have it on my paper All right. So this is painted canyon um and I do find that like a canyon or any type of rock formation or grove whatever has more um more for me than this any sanctuary ever will. So this is originally in blue pepper. Jagged stone fashioned by forgotten gods. Time and water a roading sunset. Stratigraphy bared by millennia. How does water form such wonder? I hear the wind blowing 5 miles away. Feel it 6 minutes later. Hair tangling. There is no taming anything here. Sitting on the rim listening to 5 o'clock crickets. I could topple and be happy. Sediments call to me. I taste wildness, ancient breeze. Time changes the canyon each moment. Each moment the canyon changes me. Water wears me away, peels back layers, my bluffs, my peaks. The sun sets, shadows lengthen, my hair molten. My footsteps scarcely memory, shard of the canyon's history. I guess just back in terms of spirituality, there is something sense like especially I, that was like based on when I was I was near the Grand Canyon. I don't think it was actually when I was in the Grand Canyon. Um but there is a sense like you're just walking on this ancientness and you're part of this ancient spiritualness and you know you know like the the canyon might have you in its geography but it will never like really remember you and it was profound um and I've always searching for that sense of like awe so you should come to india to feel the sense of awe you know <laughs> there india is full of archaeological structures <laughs> you'll be surprised how much awe you'll get to see <laughs> oh wonderful yeah okay uh with that i just like to ask you about this last thing that you shared with us over here if comets were tears 
you said oh, the poem cycle with the lover nathan that has died and the speaker narrator that is searching for solace and moving forward yes there's actually like a thing going on that um on the internet that i'm actually a, a widow um and um i was never married so i can't be a widow so this is definitely a persona poem um i i am not i'm not i'm not the narrator but um i was very 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 um like humbled that people read it and felt it was so authentic that they felt like it was coming directly from me so um it was actually a what i call a failed um chapbook no one would take it and i accidentally tacked it on and i was just like oh we'll just send it out and it was taken so now i have to call it a poem cycle so there's actually 16 poems so this is a teaser um so this is content from if comments were tears it was a few months before nathan died when we made one last trip to the orchard he had an exuberant amount of money to have the lights shut off they winked off as we unpacked our sandwiches and were left with the cosmos and trees our eyes slowly adjusted each moment a new speck appearing we ate slowly and laughed loudly the sun had long since set and a breeze whistled around as we sipped our wine we had worlds galaxies to explore and so little time when we had first come here i was so young making love under a maple tree and nathan firm and not spindly like he was now forgetting what came before we explored the universe that one there he says pointing to a bright star that's polaris the guiding star it's actually a multiple star one main star and two companions i'm not sure i need this commentary i have heard it but just then i found it soothing like an old friend the pawnee called polaris the star that does not walk around the big dipper they call that the big stretcher bearing away the sick and dying i suppose that's where i'll be carried across the heavens towards the sun and you he says you will have your own constellation those five stars your pen and your feet will rest right there romantic i know a pen sky death stars that is the teaser so there are in poems so okay so with that uh, we generally open it up for the audience if they would like to ask you something of course but uh, i don't think there is any questions coming up i'll just wait for a bit or let uh, for uh, letting them post anything if they have anything that they'd like to ask you oh well, while they're posting the meantime, would you like me to read another and then we can see if anyone comes no we'll, uh, i'll okay. just ask right. you to we'll share uh, the cover design of the two books that we've uh, you've shared poems from this being the first one mm-hmm. and the one that you shared about home You can share the cover design with our audience here if they'd like to purchase the book. And uh, I'd like to make a few announcements uh, that we have from Poet coming up this week. This book is called uh, Summers in Laurel Canyon. Uh, the author is Spencer J Vigil i request all and sundry to look at the book and do purchase it if you'd like to encourage the author he is a really good writer just needs to be read and this book that is jumbled part 2 is uh, the cover design is uh, done by Connie Deris from Germany and the book has been designed by Jonas Perez from Spain now Jonas Perez has made it really big he's working for one of the biggest publishing houses in USA oh wow because of his design skills mm-hmm. yes so with that i think uh, we have one comment here that is 
uh, from Al- Alexin Fim mm-hmm. who says amazing persona poem <laughs> thank you that's about it basically so with that i just like to conclude the event then because unless you have anything else to share no, with no, us no no i just wanted to really thank you and and thank everybody that was watching or that will watch so thank you so i'd firstly like to take your approval whether you would approve me of sharing this on uh, our social media youtube the video Absolutely, just, thank uh, you. Uh, yes, absolutely. Great. And uh, we have uh, a question. We, I'll just look it up. Can you please post the titles of the books and the poets, please? Oh, we'll do that for sure. Yes, we'll do that. Um, that's the question for me. So we'll share the titles of the books and the poems and the poets. As such, it's already there uh, on Goodreads. If you look up Jumbled Part Two, you'll find the names of the poets uh, listed down there, and uh, maybe even the titles are listed of the poems that are there in the book. And with that, I'd like to thank Instagram. for being our hosting partner i'd like to thank the audience who joined us and friends and family who joined us and encouraged us i'd like to thank you uh, kim for joining us for this thank event and i hope you have a great day and it's a very special day like i just ah. said in the beginning and uh, namaste Thank you so much. Thank you.